Surrounding ourselves in natural sense is one of the great pleasures in life. Unfortunately, many of us just take our noses for granted until we start suffering from smell loss. Not only does this reduce some of the joys that we can get, it can also be linked to some very serious health conditions, cardiovascular disease, arthritis, and also neurological conditions like dementia and Parkinson's disease. Now, if you live in a lovely garden, like this one, I'm here at the Chelsea Flower Show, you can go out and smell all of the natural scents around you. But lots of us, including myself, live in a very urban environment. Fortunately, there are lots of smell training kits that can help us to strengthen our sense of smell. Me and my editor at New Scientist were really interested to find out the science behind those kits and the benefits that they can bring, not just to our noses, but to our health in general. So we decided to get a load of kit in and we thought we'd just have a go with it. You know, writing the piece, I became very aware that my own sense of smell maybe wasn't as good as it had been in the past, um, which is why I've been trying smell training myself. But yeah, it would be good to kind of actually put it to the test formally. I'm not going to lie, I am a little bit nervous, especially with regards to what we understand about aging, cognitive decline and its relationship to our ability to smell. Right, yeah. I mean, there's now a lot of evidence that's emerged over the last 10 years that does show that even amongst younger participants, how well you perform on a smell test can predict how well you'll perform on a cognitive assessment for things like memory, linguistic ability. So there does seem to be this very clear connection. And that kind of makes sense when we look at the neural wiring of the olfactory system. So when uh, we smell something, those odours hit um, the lining of our nose where you have the olfactory nerve and that sends signals straight to the olfactory bulb which lies, is a part of the brain that lies basically just above the nasal cavity. Now that is directly connected then to surrounding regions that are, are associated with memory and emotional regulation. And it seems to be if your smell is working well, you're getting a lot of stimulation to all of those areas which is great for your brain. Um, but when your sense of smell starts to falter, when you lose that um, stimulation, then those brain regions can suffer as a result. So you can actually see that they begin to atrophy. Um, so this is a sort of use it or lose it kind of scenario. It really is. So the other senses like um, sight or sound, they go through a brain region called the thalamus, which is a bit like a kind of railway hub, before those signals are then passed on to other parts of the brain. Our sense of smell just bypasses that. So it goes to the olfactory bulb and then directly into the regions associated with memory or emotion, which is why we have those Proustian moments where a smell from our childhood can evoke a very powerful memory. But what we maybe haven't realized is that that kind of uh, stimulation is actually really good for our brain and we want as much of it as we can get. I think that is just wild. Um, so I am ready. To, to start smelling some things. Do we want to start with some of the odor identification tests? Absolutely, yeah. So we've got these um, multiple choice answers okay. here, and we just have to try to work out okay. which one we're sniffing. How about, so number two, our choices are smoke, glue, leather, and grass. I feel like that was a leather situation, but I was not a, not a fan of that smell. No, it smells very much of animal, actually. So I think I'm going to go for leather 2C. It was, it was, it was leather. Okay, so maybe my smell isn't as bad as I thought it was. So, yeah. I mean, perhaps you have been practicing. It's interesting too, the sort of smell vocabulary that you have. I wonder if it's just beneficial to have a wide vocabulary or to be able to identify those different smells? I mean, do we have any sort of research on, on things like that? So one idea is that our vocabulary for smells was much better before the Industrial Revolution. Mm. And now it's kind of shrunk because we just aren't exposed to so many pleasant natural smells. And actually when cities were kind of stinking, you know, they're pretty awful oh. in the 19th century, then people started to underestimate this sense and not take so much notice of it. And we're still in industrial, uh, in industrialized countries, we're still kind of showing the aftermath of that. So yeah. if we're surrounded by bad smells all the time, what kind of effect do you think that might have on, on our sort of overall system? The idea is that, you know, the inflammation that you might get from those bad odors could eventually damage the um, olfactory nerve itself. So it might be one of the causes of smell loss as we age. And in general, we just don't want chronic kind of high levels of inflammation. And so this is one of the potential links to Alzheimer's, in fact, is that when you experience smell loss, 
your immune system kind of goes a bit haywire and it might trigger chronic inflammation that could then contribute to the neural damage that comes with Alzheimer's. But the good news is that pleasant smells reduce inflammation, which also might be why um, smell training is so good for our, for our cognitive performance in general, because it's reducing that inflammatory response. Let's, let's do another one. And we've got one on here that looks a little bit more challenging. Number 11. Okay, so the options here are melon, peach, orange, or apple. Okay, I'm gonna let you smell it and I'm not gonna tell you what I think it is. Mm, yeah, I think that's peach. Do you think peach? Uh, yeah. So I was gonna go for melon. It's so evocative of a hair conditioner that I used to have. <laughs> so I'm sort of like overwhelmed. I have no idea what it actually smells yeah, like. Yeah, which I think is pretty interesting actually, because you know, with all of our sensory experiences, there is an element of subjectivity depending on the associations we have. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, if it's really bringing to mind that um, hair conditioner, then maybe it could be that it's harder for you to then form an association with yeah. the actual fruit that was behind that. Let's have a look. 11D, so both of us oh. are wrong and it's apple. <laughs> Is it seriously? But yeah. That smells like no apple I've ever <laughs> smelled in my life. I do get what you mean about the hair conditioner too. It, it also makes me wonder a little bit about the sort of molecular combinations that hit specific receptors in your brain to create the experience that is that smell. So I think smell is interesting because we do have a huge number of receptors and each odour is a combination of many different chemicals. The human nose can detect or can tell the difference between about a billion different scents if it were trained properly. So humans are kind of on a level with rodents, with dogs, with lots of other animals. So I think it's really interesting that not only did we not agree on number 11, but we also both got it wrong. Um, do you think that indicates anything or could possibly in indicate anything about our sort of levels of, of olfactory decline? Uh, I think so. But the good news is that, you know, there are all of these smell training paradigms that we can use to improve our sense of smell and potentially then protect our brain from cognitive decline because of this direct link that we see between the nose and the brain. Um, there's a turnaround of, of, you know, every few months, basically, we're starting to grow new receptors. We have stem cells in our nose that help to regenerate them. Um, and what it seems to be is that actually training our sense of smell by exposing ourselves to these more pleasant odours, the anti-inflammatory odours, that seems to help this process. Um, so that is what I've been doing basically for the last four to six weeks. And it started with just four different scents, which I thought to cover like a good range of yeah. receptors. So we have clove here, we've got lemon, rose and eucalyptus. And morning and evening, you're just meant to smell each of these for 10 to 20 seconds, kind Which, of savouring that scent. That's hit me in the brain. Yeah. Um, when you say these cover a range of different receptors, can you, can you talk to me a little bit more about that? The receptors themselves will be of different shapes, so different molecules can fit into them. Um, these seem to tick off the main kind of categories of those receptors. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just making sure that you're training the broadest range possible. It's not as simple as, say, knowing that we have the rods and cones mm -hmm. in our eye yeah. um, receptors, for example. I mean, having said that, you know, these four scents do seem to work really well in the studies, but some scientists do think it's best to get, you know, as much olfactory stimulation as you can. So, you know, I think in addition to doing that, it's, in this, it's also useful just to kind of savour all of the scents that you meet in your day-to-day -day life. So make a conscious decision to smell flowers when you encounter them. If you're cooking, to, you know, like smell mm -hmm. the different spices in your spice rack, um, just to kind of give yourself like steady stimulation throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And there's some signs that you can even do this while you're sleeping. So there's a device that was developed um, in the US called Memory Air, which pumps out um, 50 different odors over the course of the night. And this did seem to help reverse some of the cognitive decline of people who were at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So one of the other things I do is just kind of I sprinkle some of these uh, essential oils like on my pillow before uh -huh. I go to sleep just because I think like having that stimulation can't do any harm and actually yeah. it's quite nice to go to sleep with a, a nice smell around you. Can't, yeah. can't hurt, might help. Exactly and then there's been recent research showing that 
through that process, but you can actually improve the memory consolidation as with sleeping. So if you are studying for an exam and you have a certain scent um, kind of sprinkled around you as you're studying and then have that stimulation at night, your memories become a bit stronger because of that, because it's just encouraging the brain to process that whole experience that's associated with the smell, including the material that you're trying to learn. That is, that is fantastic. So editing your story was really fun and really interesting. It definitely made me think, and I think it made everybody think about their own sense of smell, to sort of be more aware of our surroundings and smelling them. It does feel like I'm more mindful of my olfactory environment, this smellscape. And I think that's a really positive thing too, to be connected and grounded to our physical environment. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I just wasn't really noticing them at all. And I think since I started uh, smell training about six weeks ago, I do feel like more flashes of colour in my day. I think it is just a greater appreciation of our sense of smell and how important it is. You know, we care about our eye health, we care about our hearing, I don't think you see so much um, attention being paid to our sense of smell, certainly until the pandemic it was very much neglected. And so I just think recognising that, you know, if you've got a great sense of smell, appreciate that. If you don't, there's something that you can do about it. That was my take home, really.